I think all the people giving him shit and all the bodybuilding coaches saying really, really low negative stuff. I don't agree with that. I think eventually if he wants to prep, I'm sure he'll learn the, probably the smartest way to get to that goal and the fastest way. If you do want to eat whatever you want, then it's important that you track and that you pay attention. There's a lot of people that do eat whatever they want. They might not eat the amount that they want, but they can eat whatever they want. I don't know how much is in a Krispy Kreme donut, but if, it was, if they were zero fat, I'd eat six of them before I work out and I'd be just fine. So it's pretty normal. We've seen like a lot of guys go to like Chipotle, right? Yeah. After a workout, they try to get like a leaner meat. Like I know you can look all this up online. They get like a leaner meat. Um, instead of going with guacamole, sour cream, and cheese, they like pick one of those things rather than all three. Maybe instead of the actual burrito, maybe they get a bowl just to cut back on calories. But what Sam Solik's doing seems to be a little bit more unconventional where he's just but he is like he is counting the calories for the day mm -hmm. and then also I think some things that people forget is that he's ahead he already looks the way that he probably wants to within reason within yeah. you, know, you always want to be bigger and leaner right but oh yeah he probably is pretty pumped about the physique that he's built and so therefore <laughs> he can kind of do whatever he wants with those calories right what do you think about that kind of stuff? Um, I think it's great if it works for you. I definitely respect the guy. He's jacked as fuck. And yeah, it works for him. Um, I think he has a super relaxed approach to nutrition, which is fine. Uh, I think maybe people could also follow that information but the key is how his intensity in the gym like if you watch his actual workout footage he is going all out every set pushing it which i think that alone keeps you lean keeps your body able to absorb food better nutrients and stuff He's like a guy that. that was has been on the leaner side yeah. He used to be like a diver, right? In school. Yeah. Was... So I think that probably not being a pussy in the gym and really, really, really pushing yourself. I don't see a whole lot of people in that age too doing that. So for most people, they'd probably get fat and not make too much progress. But I respect the guy. I think if it works, why try to try? Why? He's got some advantages, right? Like, it's clear that he's athletic. It's clear that he uses performance enhancing drugs. Not against it at all. Been doing it for a long time myself. Support it. But it is an advantage. Um, trains his face off. So I think his diet that everyone's getting so hung up on is a distraction from how hard the guy trains. Yeah. Trains really intense, and most of the stuff that we see on social media is probably just a little small snippet of how hard he actually trains because you're seeing you know a top set of this a top set of that but you're not seeing the warm-ups you're not seeing all the other stuff that he does sounds like he just goes almost as hard as he can once yeah. he's warmed up sounds like he goes as hard as he can on stuff right yeah so i think if you're doing that you can kind of have a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to food i wouldn't necessarily agree with that if you're doing like a prep i think the types of foods definitely matter, especially for digestion and stress and stuff like that and cravings. But if he just, he's, I mean, from what I know, he's not going to compete. So mm -hmm. I don't see an issue with it at all. I also saw a couple days ago, he said uh, a lot of days or some days he won't purposely try, but he'll go over his deficit and eat a little bit extra and he just doesn't really sweat it. And I think that's, that really can only happen if, again, you're training your ass off because you're just gonna burn it off the next day. And that cardio in the morning if you're consistent. So, yeah, I think all the people giving him shit and all the bodybuilding coaches saying really, really low negative stuff. Um, I don't agree with that. I think eventually if he wants to prep, I'm sure he'll learn the, the 
I don't even want to say the right way, mm -hmm. but probably the smartest way to get to that goal and the fastest way. But for now, I think when people I go on fucking... stage, they think, why risk it? You know? Yeah. Why risk it? So calories might be equal. Um, but really why risk eating a sandwich when everyone else that gets on stage doesn't normally do that? That would be kind of the question, right? It would be, yeah. now if you can do it and you prove otherwise, then maybe you're an outlier and maybe you can do that. But, uh, bodybuilding has been around for a pretty good amount of years and I only had a short experience with it, but when I was asking Hani Rambad about like certain changes and certain things, he's like, nope. I was like, can I do this? He's like, nope. <laughs> it's very strict. And each coach has kind of their own things, their own opinions. But again, like if you're trying to do the best you can and you're prepping for an actual show to actually stand on stage in front of people, you're probably thinking like, I want to do the absolute best I can. So why risk anything? The calorie equation definitely is an important factor, but I don't know, gluten, dairy, some of these things, some people believe, I mean, some people are, they'll go down to a specific type of potato, yeah. a regular potato versus a sweet potato, a sweet potato versus a yam. I mean, maybe the fitness industry has gotten too crazy about, about any of that. And maybe that's something that Sam Solik's done a good job of is saying, hey, maybe this shouldn't be our focus. Just get your, get your requirement for your calories in so you have the nutrients in your body to make what you need to make. We've talked about that before. You can't make something out of nothing. Yeah. So those guys that want to be bigger and stronger and look better that are just constantly in a caloric deficit and they're constantly worried about the bread they're eating, the beer that they're having and just super stressed about eating some ice cream here and there. That's probably not a great uh, way to get jacked and tan either. Yeah. No, I think especially I would say in a bulk, I'd probably agree with this a lot more because I did it all the way up until recently is kind of just eat whatever I want, get five, six meals in a day and train my ass off. I put a, on a lot of size and weight doing that. Um, and for the cut, I feel like maybe it's not so, I mean, obviously clean chicken breasts and rice mm -hmm. might be a little bit healthier than Subway or fast food because of whatever they put in it. But like you said on Monday when we were talking, they put shit in rice too now. So it's oh like, yeah, yeah. What's life is safe and everything else? I mean, so nothing's really a safe bet. Our food, our planet, in general, our environment is contaminated. So, I mean, now they're saying you might want to stay away from fish because there's nuclear waste in our oceans. So, yeah. So <laughs> like I, I don't know how how safe the organic free range chicken breast is in comparison to what you're getting at Wendy's. Yeah, and I don't fucking I'm never gonna know. So. I just think from a, I feel like it's more so in prep about digestion and maybe some of those foods can inflame you and stress your body out a little bit. So, you know, maybe chicken and rice might digest quicker, easier, less stress on your body as a whole. Maybe fast food might inflame your gut or do something or stress you out. But for me, I know I would probably go with the chicken and rice and maybe a healthy fat over a chicken sandwich this big just because I know I'm going to eat it and I'm going to be starving right after. So I think if if he can do that and be fine in his deficit, then great. But somebody like myself, if I do that, I'm going to want to eat five more of those sandwiches. So I'm just going to avoid it altogether. As we're talking here, we're doing some supersetting back and forth between doing some rear delts and some tricep push downs and stuff. But the other thing to think about here is that, you know, we're, I know that Sam has posted like full day of eating. I know he's shown some other things, but uh, in some of these cases, we're not talking about him eating like an obese person. We're also not talking about binging. Binging is something that holds a lot of people back. And when someone like Kenny says they eat whatever they want, there's still a governor on it. It's not really whatever you want. It's not uh, normal American public, whatever you want. It's bodybuilder, whatever you want. And Sam Solak eating a sandwich just shouldn't be such a thing. But it's interesting that it is such a thing because maybe people in fitness are way too uptight about all these things 
in the first place. And really, it's just a matter of what can you get results with. We know that the calorie equation matters. We also know that the healthier that someone is, the more that calorie equation matters. So someone who is less healthy, it might be harder for them to figure out the exact diet to get themselves heading in the right direction. But for the person that's already ahead, that has a uh, very healthy metabolism and a very healthy body, they don't have a bunch of food allergies and they don't have a bunch of hormonal issues, um, they're already all set to make the changes. They're all set up to have hypertrophy in the muscles. They're all set up to be able to lose the body fat. Whereas some other people, it just might take a lot longer. It's not that they, uh, it's not that calories in, calories out equation doesn't work for them, but we do have to admit there are differences in people and that the way that Kenny metabolizes 400 grams of carbohydrates must be quite different from someone who's twice his age, who weighs a similar body weight, who doesn't have the muscle mass that he has. I mean, aside, even aside from the muscle mass, even if it's somebody of similar age uh, that has a similar muscle mass, but what if they just have their hormones are different? I mean, we have genetic makeup. There's so many things that make us different. Again, if somebody can adhere to the calorie equation for appropriate amounts of time, they'll most likely be able to get in the shape that they can get in. But this situation gets to be more complex and more complicated than we initially probably ever thought because there's psychology, there's philosophy. And for one person, if they can go to fast food once a week, twice a week, if they could eat some French fries, if they could eat some nachos, if they can enjoy the football game, eat some wings and eat some chips, that might help them to stay on a diet for much longer. So their 60 pound body fat loss or 80 pound body fat loss might be able to continue onward for a much longer period of time than the guy who's starting on Monday and trying to be super strict, going no carb and trying to run around the block and everything else. Yeah. Ooh, we got some weight on there now, Kenny. <laughs> oh yeah. Whoa. <sighs> <sighs> Yep. Oh, I forgot we we're still podcasting. <sighs> well, what see. about the flip side? What about like uh, some people just being, you know, super strict and really pinpointing their nutrition? Like uh, I saw Aaron Reed was talking about, um, you know, being more exact with it and kind of living out of the Tupperware and all that, but. I mean, I would think if you want to live that way because you just literally want to try to do the best you can, that might be cool. Um, but for myself personally, uh, I don't look like Sam Sulek, but I'm able to maintain a very lean body. I never walk around with Tupperware. Yeah. I'm, never like, I'm never really just eating chicken breast. I mean, it's pretty rare. I might have it with dinner here and there. But there's, there's more than one way to do this stuff. It's just that if you're actually going to bodybuild and you're actually going to step on stage, it does seem like there's some protocols to follow. Um, like what's common amongst a bodybuilder? They all lift weights probably anywhere between four to five times a week. So many of them do cardio. Not everybody, but so many of them do cardio. And now you're seeing more of them do cardio even in the off season. Yep. And most of them eat five to seven meals a day. There's not that much intermittent fasting going on in bodybuilding. Some guys are a little lower carb and some guys are a little higher carb, but there's not really any proponents I can think of that are no carb. Is there a good keto guy in bodybuilding? I don't think so. I know Dave, Pal but it, uh, Dave Palumbo did keto, but it wasn't true keto. I think people will use it really sparingly. But the point is, it's like there's a certain, there's a certain uh, thing to follow. There's a certain procedure to follow. And it's cool if you don't have to follow that that strictly. But again, we're talking about, you know, if someone's getting on stage, you know, why would they want to risk it? If you're trying to get the best nutrition possible. You know, what if you're, you know, what if you're watching this and you're, 
you're, you're into some sports, you're an athlete, you just want to lift, you want to be healthy, well, fuck it, man, like, have some pizza here and there. Don't worry about that stuff too much, but really concentrate on what's your training like. When you're in the gym, is the intensity there? Are the workouts difficult? Are you able to challenge yourself, or do you feel tired all the time? If you feel tired all the time, that's when you got to start to question the diet, start to question the lifestyle. What time are you going to bed? What time do you put your phone away? What time are you getting away from your TV? What time are you shutting the lights down at night? That's when you have to really start to hyper-analyze and get yourself into a situation where you become super dedicated to it. Yeah, I agree with that. I think following some type of guidelines, if it's for bodybuilding, I mean, really just bodybuilding, that's, I feel like that's the one activity that there's kind of, there kind of has to be some sort of guideline on the food. But if I think about anything else, powerlifting, sports, I mean, you don't really need to, like, eating whatever you want isn't going to really, I mean, you could argue that it might make you a worse athlete or you might perform a little bit. If you gain a lot of body fat, it could make you worse in some sports, potentially. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. I've tried just about, I've tried a lot of shit and... I don't know. You could just go by the book and just eat clean the whole time and train the most optimal way, which is whatever mm -hmm. the scientists say. But I like trying different things. So you're never going to know unless you try and you fail. Like I did the kind of the Sam Sulik diet like two years ago. And I took it to an extreme where I literally ate whatever the fuck I wanted. Like some days it would be zero meals that would be healthy or optimal for bodybuilding but i got to a point where i was like okay this is what my body can handle i'm getting a little bit fat so i just toned it down a notch and then i kind of figured out where i fell and now i'm fine i can mm. have some type of balance like i might not eat pizza every night but there's still room for it i'm not going to stress because i know that the next day i'm going to go in the gym and train my ass off so it's really I'm not, it's not like I'm going to wake up and be fat. Mm. It's just going to kind of, just going to burn it off. So, yeah. I think to simplify it too a little bit is that if you do want to eat whatever you want, then it's important that you track and that you pay attention. There's a lot of people that do eat whatever they want. They might not eat the amount that they want, but they can eat whatever they want. They might not eat it. Um, they might not eat whatever they want and however much ever they want yeah because there's like going to be like a limit on that but if you're tracking your overall calories these things are their drop in the bucket i guess is my point you know if you have um you have some french fries on a wednesday but monday tuesday you ate pretty damn good and wednesday night you had a uh, bacon cheeseburger at a restaurant with some french fries and you dipped them in some ranch dressing it's like it's just not a huge deal next day you wake up and if you want to not in a, in a healthy way, but if you want to counteract that, maybe you do go for a good walk in the morning. Maybe you do some cardio in the morning because you're like, you know what, I did eat a lot of extra calories yesterday. Or yeah. sometimes those extra calories could be used to your advantage. You could say, well, I'm going to eat whatever I want on Sunday because Monday I'm going to go in the gym and just go at it yeah. and go all out. And so I think, I, I mean, I, that's the way I've always kind of done things. I don't necessarily go off plan in terms of the actual foods that I eat all that often, but I'll just eat more. Yeah. I did it the other day for a run. I knew I was going to have a long run on a Sunday and on Saturday I ate and ate and ate, weighed about five or six pounds more in the morning, which was kind of risky because I didn't know how I was going to work out for a run, but I ran the fastest I ever ran and ran my first half marathon in under two hours. So it worked out. I weighed 228 instead of normally waking up at 222, 223. So you can kind of do that too. But like that wasn't, that was kind of fun for me to eat extra calories. But I didn't, you know, just sit there and just eat ice cream and shit like that. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know if. You move to some shoulder presses or something? Yeah. I just feel like the timing of stuff mm -hmm. is super important. Let me get a pump. Yeah. I feel like the timing, I don't know if. Sam Sulik or whoever's popular right now is talking about that or if they're even keeping that in mind. But I think 
following basic guidelines like we talked about, like let's say I decided to eat whatever I wanted and do if it fits your macros for the next two months of this off season, I would still keep in mind, okay, I probably don't want to have too much fat pre and post workout, but what the carbs are coming from, as long as it's low in fat, I still don't even really trip or stress about that. Like, I don't know how much is in a Krispy Kreme donut, but if, it was, if they were zero fat, I'd eat six of them before I work out mm -hmm. and I'd be just fine. But I think timing, you know, your macros and placing them in the right position throughout the day is, is pretty huge. Like keeping fat more, in my opinion, beginning, end of the day, keep you kind of satiated and pre and post workout. That's where I kind of have some some fun. I do like Rice Krispie treats. I do cereal. Jay Cutler used to have a Coke. Yeah, especially if you're doing some insulin, have a little fun with it. There's tons of stuff with zero fat that you could still enjoy. People have cereal, Rice Krispie treats. Yeah. Cocoa Pebbles, Fruity Pebbles. Yeah, even like Pop Tarts. Like Pop Tarts have a little bit of fat, about seven grams. But still, something like that, mm -hmm. I'm not going to stress about. Especially if I'm in a pinch. I might do like a protein shake and at that point candy. it's about the it's about the energy and you can't worry about your uh, rice cakes that you have at home that you forgot to bring with you for the day. Yeah. You need to have the most important things that you end up having a good workout. Right. And so how do you get yourself to have that good workout? You might have to you know, you eat something that's a little off plan because you need the calories. You're mentioning um, putting stuff around the workout. Just because you put something around the workout, it doesn't really change it doesn't change the calories, right? But it does change like the way that your body handles those calories. Right, yeah. So having more carbs before a workout might allow you to push a little harder than you would otherwise if you didn't have it. So maybe your workout for the day on a scale of one to 10, maybe it's like a nine because you had some pre-workout carbohydrates and maybe you burned an extra 250 calories and maybe because you were able to go harder maybe your uptake of carbohydrates is gonna be better because you didn't have a shitty workout. You actually got a good pump in. Right. You did, did what you set out to do and now the carbs you're gonna have post-workout, this is all like, this is very bro science-y, but the, the carbs that you had post-workout are gonna kind of be more catered to wanting to go to your muscle cells rather than wanting to be stored as fat. Mm. I would say in general, you don't really wanna be mixing carbs and fats. That's really an area that you don't hear. But people are in good shape. The only time you'll hear them talk about carbs and fats together would potentially be like on a cheat meal. And I'm not talking about not having any carbs or any fat. Um, obviously, you can have them together. It's not gonna uh, turn you into an elf or turn you into a lion or anything weird or turn you into a fucking lizard or some shit but what it is going to do is carbohydrates and fats together like you fo follow stan efforting's vertical diet stan has has professed this since the beginning that you want to have lean meat with your rice but a lot of people take like 80 20 beef and mix it with rice and when you do that the caloric load that you're going to consume is going to be huge because you have meat that's not very lean and you got rice and you can just eat that forever so when we mix carbohydrates and fats together, and we have pizza, we have ice cream, and even in some healthier scenarios where we have steak and rice or steak and potatoes, when the fat calories are high, it's just easier to eat more. So in my opinion, one of the easiest things you can do if you wanna to try to control your weight and control your energy, which all nutritional protocols are about trying to manage the overall amount of energy that you consume. You want to try to stack the odds in your favor. All right, you're a big guy. You're a little fatter than you want to be. Eat a lot of protein. Eat a lot of vegetables. Vegetables that don't, you know, don't go dipping them in a bunch of oil and ranch and Caesar salad dressing. 30 grams of fat, easily, at a restaurant. When you have a Caesar salad and you don't have the dressing on the side, boom. That's like... That's a pretty big amount of fat just for your salad. Um, you wanna eat things that are satiating as well. So you got stuff yourself with protein, stuff yourself with vegetables, and then something like a potato, in my opinion, has a, a bigger advantage, especially a regular potato, 
even over, I know sweet potatoes and yams are really popular in bodybuilding, but a regular potato is fucking harder to eat. <laughs> Why would you want something that's harder to eat? Well, it's harder to eat, it takes longer, and that little bastard will fill you up uh, that much more. When we have rice, rice is great. It's a great tool. I think rice is, I mean, it, it just depends on what someone's doing, but for the most part, uh, rice is a really good energy source, but to me it makes eating more food easier. So if eating more food is troublesome for you, or you need to get your protein in, uh, and you have a hard time eating some of the meat that you're eating because it's lean, that's where rice might come in handy because the rice, sometimes you cook rice, vegetables, and some meat together, and now uh, everything slides down your throat a little easier. Everything's got a little bit more moisture to it. So. Those are all things to keep in mind, but when you start to have fats and carbs together, that's usually a recipe for you not being able to control yourself and you're going to overeat. You look at like potato chips and candy, they have, uh, they have a few different things going on that are similar. Usually, there's, uh, usually it's kind of sweet, or in the case of like a potato chip, it's savory, salty, but there's like carbs fat, there's carbs, fats, salt, and sometimes sweetness, all combined in one. And yeah. if you have the ability to stop yourself from overeating on something like that, then uh, you're normally a mutant. <laughs> the reason why a bodybuilder might not care so much if they eat Skittles. They might care so much if they have Starburst. Because these are all things that don't have carbs in them, and when you go and lift, you're burning up a bunch of carbohydrates. Yeah, I agree with that. <sighs> yeah, protein leveraging. I agree with that. Smash a bunch of protein. Yeah, I think even, uh, yeah, I was explaining that to somebody today, uh, a buddy of mine that just eating, he was asking me ways to basically stop being so hungry. I just told him to eat more, but eat more protein like Mark says. So I feel like the more protein you can get in, uh, the less, yeah, cravings you're gonna have, the more anabolic you're gonna be, the better your recovery is gonna be. But also sprinkling in some carbs and fats, uh, and the timing of those is. Are fats anything important. that you have to even think about for yourself, or do they just come in the form of like your meat that you eat usually, mm. and eggs and stuff? Yeah, I don't really count. I don't count the fat in the meat unless I'm. Yeah, to I, me, I don't even. I don't really. Unless I'm unless I'm in a prep. Obviously, I'm not gonna do like. If I do, I don't know, steak, rice, and olive oil, I'm definitely gonna keep in mind, like in a prep, how much fat is in the meat. But in an off season, I don't even count any fat from the meat, especially like not chicken. Because you're eating everything that's lean anyway. Yeah. I'm the same way. I only don't count really... the added fat. Yeah. And yeah, that's how I do it. What would be considered like in a meal? When you're trying to get leaner, what would be considered kind of a lot of fat where you'd be like, ah, I better just wait till I get to my other meal or whatever? Um, like a number. Um, yeah, like 15, 20, 25, 10. Mm, like what's, in an off what's a number where you look at it and you go, ah, it's not worth it? Maybe above like, maybe close to like 40, 50. Because I know I, a lot of my meals have 35 grams of fat, mm -hmm. which to me is higher than I'm used to. Um, but that's 30 grams of fat, like four times a day. Cause there's probably shakes and some other leaner proteins in there or something. Yeah. So I would say like anything above maybe 40. So if it's like 50 grams of mm. fat, I'm like, shit, that's creeping into how much carbs I usually eat. So mm. I might want to tone that down unless my coach program See what you said right there. You immediately thought about the carbs. He thought about the other major energy source for us. So you got carbs and fats. His brain immediately went to okay, if I eat a big ribeye, maybe I should just, like if you're at a barbecue or something and you size up the event that's going on mm. and there's hot dogs and there's cheeseburgers and there's ribeyes, you can eat all those things, but it'd probably be smart in that particular situation to avoid some of the carbohydrates. Again, so hopefully in that situation, you're probably gonna overeat anyway because there's so much protein and fat that's rich within some of these foods, but it might be easier to control yourself a little bit better. Yeah, I think also just 
kind of matching the food with what you're doing throughout the day mm, like that's a good point it's pretty simple for me to just once i figured that out like what fat and carbs are typically used for fats used for well they can both be used for energy but mm -hmm. for me and my goal is fat is used to keep me full in my stomach carbs i burn through quick even if i eat a lot of them but they do give me a great pump they keep the muscle full which is what i'm trying to do in the gym um like if you were to eat some chicken breast and some rice that's a good meal yeah but you'll be like ravenously hungry two three hours later probably yeah yeah so as opposed to if there was a little bit of steak and there was a little bit of fat in that meal yeah maybe you'd be able to yeah but if i'm not training that even when i wasn't on a diet and didn't have a coach if I'm not gonna be in the gym, breaking some muscle tissue down and you know, using energy, then I'm not gonna have as much, nearly as much carbs. And if I really wanna get lean, I might not even have any carbs because I know just with my body personally that I can go a couple days of just protein and, and uh, fats. Like every meal could be I remember I had an off day the other day. It was like bison and almonds for breakfast. I could do that six times a day, be fine, stay full, because I know the following three days, I'm gonna have a bunch of carbs. And my body's gonna be able to balance the two. And if you think about it, what am I gonna do with the carbs if I just sit around all day? Yes, I'm working them on my feet, but realistically, I'm not gonna be pushing that into the muscle or anything. So in my head, being a meathead, I'm like, that's potential extra fat storage that I don't want. So mm. I'm just gonna use fats to my advantage there. I stay full, don't have any cravings, and just do it like that. No need for carbs on those days. I'd also say it takes, you know, it takes a lot to be like, it takes a little to be good at something. You work out a little bit for a little while, four or five years, you know, you train and you start to get more and more into it, get a little intense with the workouts. Um, you start eating eggs in the morning, you have another protein meal or two during the day, you have a post-workout protein shake. You probably look pretty good because those are, those are all really big, those are all really big changes, but you'll see all the fun, the things that we view as fun, but other people might have an interpretation that these things are fun for them. The more and more that fun and all that outside noise gets condensed and brought down. You know, they say, I saw Allen Iverson one time talking about Kobe Bryant. And he was like, the big difference with him is that he wasn't at the club at night. He wasn't partying. He wasn't, he was shooting free throws. He was working on his uh, fadeaway. He was working on three pointers. And for some people, that's what it takes to be a champion. For other people, they might not have to think of that. They might not have to go to those lengths. Um, maybe Allen Iverson didn't. And maybe some of our you know, athletes that we're huge fans of, maybe through some sort of divine intervention, they just got it. But the more and more into this stuff you get, the more and more you might have to lean harder and harder into it. And what you'll find is that's really satisfying. It actually feels really good. It feels amazing to be different, to literally feel like you're different than other people, even though we're more similar than we are different. It feels good to, uh, it feels good to put yourself into a category. Like I know Kenny views himself as more than, you know, just someone that does some bodybuilding, but it feels good to attach yourself to a, a group of people. Yeah. I'm a bodybuilder. So now yep. I do bodybuilding things. And what is bodybuilding? Bodybuilding means something. Mm -hmm. um, it's, like, uh, it's like being part of the jujitsu community. Like those guys see each other with the gnarly ears and stuff and they, they give each other like a, hey man, what's up? They give each yep. other a little bro fist. Bodybuilder, when you see, you know, real recognized, real, see someone walking around lumped up like this guy, you're like, yo, that's, that's sick. The so bodybuilders do bodybuilder things. Powerlifters do powerlifter things. And it feels good sometimes to attach yourself to these groups and then to just dive in even harder. Like what if, what if you're the anomaly amongst the 10 bodybuilding friends that you have or amongst the 10 powerlifting friends that you have? What if you're the one guy that does a little extra work? What if you're the one guy that takes the time to get the extra sleep? What yes. if you're the guy to do the extra uh, meal prep? 
to spend the extra. Kenny's yep. bag, it just keeps growing and growing. Every time I see him, his bag's getting bigger. That's true. Because it takes a lot to get here in the morning, um, you know, at seven o'clock to hit a workout, to podcast, to do the other work that he's responsible for and have all the food prep and make sure that you're staying ahead the whole time. Yeah. Again, there might be some people that don't have to do that. They might not have to adhere to as many rules, but at some point, uh, if you want to go from good to being awesome to eventually being great or to eventually being something like legendary, mm. then you're going to have to really put in the time, the effort. I mean, look at the, look at these guys, look at, uh, you know, Jay Cutler, um, you got, you know, Ronnie Coleman, you look at some of these guys over the years and the sacrifices that each guy had to make, maybe it was different for Jay Cutler than it was for Ronnie Coleman. Maybe it was different for this guy versus that guy. But what matters the most is how are you, you know, what, where are you at? And you might have to, and you might feel like, I think everyone feels this way. You feel like you got to do twice the amount of work as like your friend. Yep. You're like, oh, I got this friend. He eats whatever he wants and he's jacked. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of just friend. always feel that way. Yeah, that friend is uh, <laughs> really emotional damage. <laughs> but uh, anyway, hopefully we made sense of how the influencers, you know, how some of the influences that you see on social media are eating. Um, there's, there's many different ways to do this, but everyone is following some sort of protocol that is allowing them to fall into some sort of uh, management of calories, right? Yeah, I think, you know, yes, Sam Sulik is a beast, and I know a lot of young people look up to him, but you have to remember he is doing what works for him. He is not going and copying some other kid who's That's jacked. what I admire the most about him. Yeah, he's, he's not, not copying falling, He's not falling into trends, not to say there's too many of those with the diet, but he's just doing his own shit. And he's not copying anybody else. He's not looking for, you know, he's just living his life, doing his thing. And the, the people that are fans of him will copy him. But I don't think that, you know, just because you see him eating a certain way and he posts it for his content, that should not mean you go do it. You just keep doing what works for you and, you know, go your own route. And then if you can eat a Subway sandwich post-workout and you're jacked and tan and lean and look handsome, then do it. But if not, then I wouldn't recommend it. Take us out of here, Kenny Williams. That's enough anabolic activities for today. Is it really? Or are we just getting started? Yeah, we're, we are uh, hitting some arms oh, I'm and, cheating some, pretty bad. and some shoulders and some something special. But uh, that's it, episode uh, 22. 22. 22. Um, let us know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, drop a comment, leave a like. We respond and we appreciate and love everybody. Except Strength for is the negative people. Ex yeah, the negative people can fuck right off, but I still appreciate you. So leave a ne leave a negative comment. Yeah, leave leave thank a, you. leave a negative comment. Uh, I don't cry at night. Sometimes I do, but yes, thank you. Last night was hard. You cried a lot. Yeah, I did. So so we're just gonna ignore that. The so it's really wet. <laughs> yeah, the pillows I do to tend to over. be wet. That is true, but that is it. <laughs> anabolic Activities AA meeting. Anabolic Activities on YouTube and Instagram. Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram. That is it. And then the this is what he says at the end. Whoa, why is his back so big? Strength is never, that's what weakness, it says. Weakness is never strength. Catch yep. you guys later. Give him a punch. Punch Wyatt. <clears throat> oh. It really just comes down to the same thing it's always come down to. Again, it's, it's nutrition, it's sleep, just the basics. There's like basic things that if they're there, your body will adapt. If those things aren't there, your body won't adapt and it's gonna be a really rough go of it. I just pay attention to my body. I know when it's responding well, I know when I get a good workout, it's beneficial. I just feel like after a while, you need to pull back, let your body breathe. I just always try to pay attention to things like that.